The Accident Mortgage and Realty Show is sponsored by Accident Mortgage, an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 255368, and Accident Realty Advisors, which is a separate company from but still affiliated with Accident Mortgage. Putting a roof over your head without the headache. Get answers to all of your home buying questions. This is the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickers on 620 WTMJ. And our Sunday best to you. Good morning and welcome to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show. I'm Steve Kettlar along with AccuNet Mortgages and AccuNet Realty Advisors, President Brian Wickert, licensed mortgage consultant and millennial correspondent David Wickert. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, and what a fine Summerfest run it's been. I just want to say that Becky and I got to go to Paul McCartney on uh, Friday. That was awesome. The guy's 74. Yeah. And he... Putting you to shame. Putting me to shame. 20 years your senior. Seven, uh, two and a half hour concert. You know, no break. Unbelievable. Cool. It's good. And what a nice stretch of weather it was, too. Hey, anyway, so we got a lot of talk about today, Steve. We got the June's J- June jobs report came out on Friday. Let's start with that. Yeah. Way stronger than expected. Remember, that was after May's dismal 30,000 jobs. Mm-hmm. If that. We had been averaging 200,000 right. a month last year. Then all of a sudden, brrrp, uh, 30. And by the way, that was revised down to a 11,000. Yeah. Oh. Crazy. Really? Okay. Yeah, that got revised down. But then all of a sudden, June, everybody was expecting 165,000 new jobs. Yeah. Bam, 287. Okay. 287,000. That set the stock market roaring up. Yeah. Erased all of the Brexit uh, nervous losses that we had. Yeah. Didn't you tell me, David, the S&P finished at an all-time record? I think it it flirted with maybe its intraday high. um, Yeah. But and, and I, th- I think it closed uh, darn near the top. Yep. Okay. So you had the Dow Jones was up 250 points. So this would normally be devastating for mortgage rates. Ah. In a normal world. That's right, Steve. But it didn't happen on Friday. Nope. Nope. Mor- no. Mortgage rates and rates on 10-year government debt actually went down. Yeah. Uh, which is odd. We are living in a dream world right now. And uh, anyway, so uh, we ended the week, Dave. Where did we end the week uh, mortgage-wise for a? On a 30-year loan. So on with all the, the right stuff, uh, $200,000 loan, 25% equity, uh, escrowing for taxes, 3375 on a 30-year fixed oh, rate Dave, mortgage. Dave, if how many points would it take to get that? That is zero points. If wow. you're 3.39. And what are our... Um, uh, Expenses. Lender fees that yeah. we charge? It's the four things. Uh, as I describe it, it's the things that we have to do no matter who is buying or refinancing a home. we got to get an appraisal, got to figure out what it's worth, credit report, title insurance, and the cost of the closing agent, the person who helps you sign your name at the closing table. So wait, we don't charge any fees that go to us? We yet? don't. Right. We don't. Okay, that's in contrast to the nation's largest online lender, which now, Steve, we have added a direct comparison, and I'm going to say their name, Quicken Loans. Inc. Quicken is a registered trademark of Intuit used under license. And then their other brand, Rocket Mortgage, yes. which is a service mark of Quicken Loans. You can now go to our website under check rates and compare Rocket Mortgage versus Acunet. And uh, as of the other day, and by the way, we use only a 720 credit score for their comparison oh. because that's what they show on their website. Sure. For the 3375 rate, uh, their total costs were $6,259. Holy cow. Our costs, uh, because of that credit score, we would have had to charge a quarter, no, one-eighth of a point. Our total costs were 1410 That's a difference of, I'm not making this up, $4,849 between yes. low overhead Acunet and the Rocket guys. Yeah, they got to pay for that Super Bowl ad. And, every, oh, and all the other all ads. The other ads. So on a $300,000 loan, by the way, um, we could get down all the way to three and a quarter on a 30-year fixed with no points and actually a $300 closing cost credit. On a 20-year, I just priced this up, Dave, 300000 25% equity, all the other right stuff, 2.99. Wow. You'd have to pay us a point, 1.1 on point one points on a 20-year. I've been having a lot of conversations with people on the phone talking about shortening up the loan term. on their loan exactly because if you're five years into your you know when you bought your house 
then you're thinking to yourself, eh, do I want to go back out to 30? Really, I just want to pay this down faster. A lot of conversations about 15-year, a lot of conversations about 20. 15-year, 2.75%. On a two hundred thousand. On a two hundred thousand dollar loan, APR is two point seven. I just priced up a three hundred thousand dollar loan, twenty five percent equity, which really doesn't matter. On a fifteen year, you can have as little as twenty percent equity, two point five if you're willing to pay a half oh a point gosh. with an APR two point five eight five. So, yeah, the mortgage highway, Steve, is busy. Appraisers are busy. Uh, you really got to get that rock solid pre approval going if you're going to be a home buyer. Yeah. All right, when we come back, let's talk about uh, the unemployment report a little bit. You're listening to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. Um. Yeah, Sting, when he was with the uh, police, he'll be at the uh, Marcus Amphitheater, 8 o'clock tonight with Peter Gabriel. You know, the uh, Major League Baseball All-Star break begins tomorrow for the Brewers with Aaron Hill already moved. What other players might not return from the break with the team? Fox Sports Wisconsin's Craig uh, Kashan takes a look when he joins Justin Garcia on Sports Central. That'll be tomorrow night at 8.35. Brian Wickard is with us. David Wickard is with us. It's the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Hour here on 620 WTMJ. We we're kind of focusing in on these uh, employment numbers from the jobs report on Friday. And remember, when we've talked about this before, I've often said, Let's not talk about unemployment or the number of new jobs created. What we should really be talking about is the number of people who are working. And uh, so according to the one survey, remember the $287,000 number comes from a survey of payroll services, uh, people like uh, ADP yep. and paychecks like that, well, like, like what Academic Mortgage uses. So they said uh, 287,000 new jobs are created, but they don't give us the number of jobs. In that one, we have to go to the... Um, telephone survey yeah. that's done, which is how we come up with the unemployment rate, which went from 4.7 to 4.9. Yeah, but that's because more people hopped into the job market that's than right. anything else. That's right. And so we look at that. Because, by the way, if you're not looking for a job, you don't get counted. That's right. In you're the just unemployment on, the, rate. You're on the sidelines. So we have 151 million, uh, 97,000 people working. So just a little over 151 million in okay. America. There are 7.78 million people who are officially unemployed and 94 million, 94.5 million who are uh, not in the labor force at all. Okay. Do you have a favorite statistic? Well, I think it's 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 a conversation about uh, the to it's you can measure the labor force as a, a percentage of the total population, but that's a tiny bit unfair if only because you're counting, you know, God and everybody. There was an interesting statistic, though, talking about prime age workers, those aged 25 to 54. 81% of those people are participating in the, in the workforce. Yeah, in the workforce. So it's you know, there's a lot of people who are still uh, working and looking for work in that prime Okay, and the labor participation rate for all workers is did go up a little bit to 62.7. Um, the reason why we're talking about the unemployment report, by the way, it was so good that now the talk is back on the table that the Federal Reserve here in the United States might be, I, I read some commentary by several economists saying, you know what, we think they're going to raise mm -hmm. short-term rates in September. Really? Yeah. Okay. And But but here's what's going to happen, Steve. That That's going to make everybody's home equity line of credit go up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's going to do nothing to mortgage rates, we think. And why is that, Dave? Well, because even if they raise rates, people are looking for yield in the international financial markets. And so if they suddenly can get a little bit more interest on American debt, they're going to overbuy that debt, and it's going to drive down the prices on that debt. Right. Because right now, if, if you invest in Swiss government debt, Yes. Uh, the yield on that for 10 years is negative 0.66. Yes. And aren't they now issuing debt, David, for 50 years? Yes. Half a century, Steve. Half a century. At negative interest rates. Yes. Just keep my money safe. It's true. There, It's kind of ridiculous in reading some of the articles. It's, it's because it's too expensive to put your money in a vault that they'd rather just give it to the Swiss and ask for it back in a half, half a century. century. Because you only have to give them electrons. Exactly. Hey, uh, one other interesting thing. We were talking last week about trillions of dollars. 
we came up with an analogy, um, or a time analogy. So a trillion, because that's a hard number. Oh, by the way, a third of all the government debt out there of developing countries is now said to have negative interest rates. Yes. Okay. So those are trillions and trillions of dollars worth of debt. So, Dave, let's compare. Okay. What's a million seconds? A million seconds. So we'll measure this in terms of time. A million seconds is 11 and a half days. All right. What about a billion? A billion, a billion seconds is 31 years. All right. So your mom and I, as you know, celebrated our 33rd, 33rd wedding anniversary last weekend. So by you. I've been married to your mother for over a billion, a billion seconds. seconds. Honey, it only seems like 900 <laughs> billion. One. It's gone really fast. And then, and then a trillion seconds, though, is over 31,000 years, which would take you back to the Paleolithic era for those... Uh, isn't that the same as the Stone Age? Yes, it is. It's true. <laughs> That's before the advent of agriculture is a trillion seconds. Because so hunters just, and gatherers. It's true. All right. So when we come back, I've got the numbers for the five counties south eastern Wisconsin uh, statistical area in terms of home sales. And you are going to be surprised with the numbers when we come back. And if you have a question for Brian or David, you can reach us at 414-799-1620 or toll-free on the AccuNet Mortgage toll-free talk line. That number is 1-800-877-1620. That's 311. They'll be at the Miller Light Oasis tonight at 10 o'clock as we uh, wrap up Summerfest tonight. You know, with the country still reeling from the tragic shooting in Dallas that resulted in the death of multiple police officers, how are the officers of Milwaukee responding and reacting? You can catch that on Wisconsin's Afternoon News at 321 tomorrow afternoon right here on WTMJ. Jim in Milwaukee has a question for Brian and David. Go ahead. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I have an $80,000 80, $80, mortgage, and my rate is 375 now, I know you guys were talking about trying to shorten up your loan. I'm wondering about going the other way. I have a 20-year. What if I go 30, take the savings, which I think would be somewhere around maybe 100 or $150 a month, and take that money and invest it elsewhere? Is there ever a time where you'd want to do that instead of shortening the loan? Yeah, the, the this is a conversation we have a lot uh in, in trying to figure out what is that best balance. And I guess setting aside the, you know, what would you do with the savings on your right. monthly payment, I think the conversation we have is you can always pay your mortgage faster, but you can't pay it slower. So if you do go back out to 30 years, it just allows you to stay in control of, of how you decide to pay back your loan. And I think it just it depends on kind of what the ultimate goal is, uh, but it, going back out to 30 years I, I think makes sense if the goal is hey I want to you know increase my monthly cash flow for you know well, for my household budget. Let's talk about what I think Jim is getting at. What did you say your loan amount was, Jim? Eighty thousand, and it's a condo. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah okay. So all right. So let's just say that you had a hundred dollar swing in payment there. Um, you know. If you invested that, we were just talking off the air or before the show started, the Standard & Poor's 500 index, the S&P 500, throws off a yield, a dividend yield of 2.11%. 2 and the 10-year and the Treasury ended the week at 1.36. Just for Correct. So if you were to do that, I would not think you would want to invest in U.S. Treasuries. You know, <laughs> if you have a long enough time horizon, you know, maybe you take that and invest it in your in retirement savings. You know, a raw, no, this isn't the investment show, but tune in on Saturdays for all the investment shows that <laughs> WTMJ just runs. Put it in your savings account. I mean, well, no, I wouldn't put it in your savings. I know, You're going to own zero. Saying, okay. But, you know, over a longer period of time, most financial advisors would tell you you can pretty safely expect to get a 7% return. Isn't that what you're telling people when you're a financial advisor? I'm Six, seven? Sure. It depends how old or young you are. Okay. But if you have a long enough horizon. So, yeah, give us a buzz. Give David a call tomorrow or leave your, your name with our producer, and we'll we'll be happy to run the numbers for you. Thanks for listening and calling into the show today. And by the way, speaking of condos, um, there were 446 condos that sold in the five-county Milwaukee metropolitan area uh, last month in the month of June. Okay, we, you guys failed miserably on this last month's quiz. And now we're talking about condos, Steve. Do you think it took... 1.4 months to get the accepted offer, not closed, just to get the accepted offer. 1.4 months, 2.4 months, or 3.4 months to get the uh, accepted offer on a condo. 
I'm going to go with the longest period of time. I'm with Steve because I'm, I'm burnt. Yeah, you got burnt. Time. <laughs> yeah, you're correct. So 3.4. So, you know, those people, and the, by the way, it took another month to close. So the people that sold on June 30th listed their home on March 21st. I, on average. I still, I know. I, there's, uh, who are these people who are, okay, I right. just, we're just seeing so many listings go quickly because it's a seller's market. There are too many buyers nah, out there. Nah, whoa, 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 hey. We're gonna we're gonna rebut that okay. commonly held uh, thought in just a second. All right, last day on condos here before the news break, and we'll talk more after. David, which one is the fastest selling condo market, Brookfield, Franklin, or Germantown? I'm gonna go G Town. G Town, Steve. Yeah, G Town. Wow, you guys are re- Can you see my screen? <laughs> it has one month. 29 days, and, that, and I'm only looking at municipalities. From the day they listed it to the day they, they got, got the accepted, accepted offer. offer. Right. Okay. Yeah, so not two days, not three days, 29, uh-huh. on average, out of the 10. I'm only looking at municipalities that had 10. So we had Germantown was at 1, Franklin at 1.5, and Brookfield at 1.6. Hmm. Milwaukee, which is the biggest condo market, where 117 units sold, was at 3.3. And the slowest selling condo market before we go to the break here was St. Francis. Hmm. Uh, that can't be right. I got to do the math again. Oh, you know what? There was a stinker in there. Never mind. One. We had a data One outlier. long ball. All right. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the single family market uh, after the news. You're listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. Michelle Richards joins us now from the WTMJ 24 hour newsroom. Thank you. The Dallas police chief says the suspect in the deadly attack on police officers scrawled letters in his own blood on the walls of the parking garage where officers cornered and later killed. Sitting right here, you're going to be the one that saves me. Ryan Adams, who will be at the Harley Davidson Roadhouse stage at 10 o'clock tonight, closing out Summerfest. We're in the midst of the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show. David Wickert with us, Brian Wickert with us. We were trying to quantify a trillion and, and get our heads around how big that number is. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, a trillion so, years ago. We were talking about a trillion yeah, years ago uh, was the no, Stone Age. Uh, no, a, tri- a trillion seconds, seconds ago. Seconds, I'm sorry. A trillion <laughs> seconds ago was the <laughs> Stone Brian, Age to Hello. the Big Bang. Yeah, it was the advent of uh, art as well as the advent of agriculture and the uh, oldest piece of art, uh, according to Wikipedia, source of all knowledge. Ask uh, Steve what he thinks so. What, uh, what was what the is? oldest piece of art? It was a drawing. What do you think it was a drawing? Oh, it was of? dogs playing poker. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a naked lady, so something. Imagine that. So Some things never change. <laughs> okay. but anyway. All right, back to uh, housing statistics for the... Uh, five-county Milwaukee metropolitan area, I said I was going to rebut what David said, which is, oh, it's such a tight market. Well, we had finally a turnaround in June. Oh. While home sales were up, and this is counting uh, condominiums and single-family homes together, there were 2,598 sales. That's up just a hair under 1%. Okay. All right, but now are you ready? Listings were up. Finally. Oh. 3,108. People are seeing that their neighbors are selling their house. Exactly. And pretty quick for a good price. So 3,100 came on the market, 2,600 sold. Hey, we got 500 extra homes. homes. Yeah. All right. So we think, this is anecdotal from a real estate agent I was talking to at a closing the week before last, and she said, you know, I'm seeing fewer buyers out there. I said, really? Wow, that's interesting. Hmm. And she also said, anecdotally, which the numbers bear out, She's getting more listings. Okay. So she thinks that, you know, some of the buyers are discouraged who were looking earlier in the year when that gap was way turned around. Sure. And, um, and, and so she's also said, you know, people are encouraged by the additional prices and they're hearing all the good stories, so they're listing. What does this mean? This means if you have been sitting on the sidelines, yeah. maybe you didn't have a good pre-approval, maybe that's why you didn't win in a competitive bidding situation because, yes. let's face it, the, the really choice houses go quick and oftentimes have more than one offer. Yes. And so remember, if you if you take the few extra days of time to send us your income and asset documentation, then what you get back from Acunet is a rock-solid pre-approval letter where on the front page it explains to the listing agent and the seller it is the next best thing to a cash offer. You were, I, okay, and I, I don't mean this sarcastically, but it's better than a cash offer because you were talking about the discount that cash buyers are getting 
in the market yeah, compared to the list price. Okay, on condos where 31% of the um, offers were or sales were cash, they got a 2.4% discount. Okay. And over in the single family, cash buyers got over a 5% discount on the latest listing price, okay. whereas uh, people with 30-year uh, fixed-rate mortgages only got a 1.7% discount. So if you're a seller, yeah, the person with the cash offer, I like your, I like just, your logic. The, but the math bears it out that you will, if you're selling your home, you will get 4% more yeah. by taking a rock-solid pre-approval than a cash offer. I mean, in uh, really broad terms. In really broad terms. Okay. But at any rate, the, the point is you, you do have to be ready and... Um, and getting a rock solid pre approval does make a difference. It also allows us to clo- your, close your loan faster. Did I mention that the, the highway, is, highway is, is jammed? Yeah. And so if you get a rock solid pre approval, then you can actually write with a 30 day financing and closing. Well, because we've done a little bit of homework before we've you're done out all there. the homework. Yeah. We've done all the homework except for the appraisal. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we should mention for refinancers and home buyers, if you have 20% equity, we are getting a lot of appraisal waivers out of Fannie Mae's automated underwriting system. That's true. Then we, I did three uh, refinances over the 4th of July weekend. All three of them had property inspection or appraisal waivers. Hmm. That really speeds things up. Okay, in terms of fastest selling municipalities, all right, Steve, over to you. This is for single family homes. Which okay. one was the fastest in June? Do you like Muskego, Heartland, or Greendale? Oh, boy. Muskego. Ah, all right, that was third place. I got gotcha. you. Heartland was in second place, and Greendale, I think for the second month in a row, average hmm. uh, continuous days on market before they got an offer, 28. Okay. Wow. 20. So Greendale, your hottest market, I think, for the second uh, week in a row. Then in fourth place, Wauwatosa, where it took 43 days, or 1.4 months, to get that accepted offer on average. Then New Berlin, uh, also in the one-and-a-half-month uh, area, Oak Creek, at 1.6, Port Washington making it to the top 10 this month at 1.7, uh, Franklin at 1.7, Whitefish Bay 1.7 months. There's a market you often hear is you know just days on market. Yeah, uh, Greenfield at number nine, and then Eagle. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about what are we going to talk about? I here? want to talk about the three expenses that we don't have to count in your affordability calculations, but still impact your monthly budget when it comes to buying a house. When we come back. Right here on the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. Tonight, along with Sting, wrapping up Summerfest. You know, with two moves already under their belt, are the Milwaukee Bucks done with free agency? Justin Garcia examines that landscape coming up here at 1207 today during Wisconsin Sports Weekend. It's the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Hour here on 620 WTMJ. David Wickert with us, Brian Wickert with us. And, and David, you were just mentioning about the expenses, three of them that don't affect your affordability calculation? Absolutely. So the, the term of art is the debt-to-income ratio. What percentage of your monthly bills gets... What percentage of your monthly gross of income? Of your gross income is gets eaten up by your monthly bills. So that's a car loan, uh, that could be student loans, credit card minimums. But there are expenses that don't get reported to the credit bureaus, but that you still pay... On a monthly basis. And we don't have to count them in that debt to income. And just let me say this about that. I just approved somebody who's relocating from Milwaukee to Florida. Yes. And because the husband is retiring, I can't use his current income. Yes. Okay. And I can't use his future pension income either. But the wife in this case has got a job lined up as a teacher. Yeah. So I'm only using her $40,000 $40,000 base salary, yes. which amounts to $3,333 a month before any taxes are taken out. Right. And I was able to get her loan approved with a 49% debt-to-income ratio. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So so when people say, oh, mortgage lending standards are so tight. Now, now these people have 800 credit. Okay, and you wouldn't get that approval if they had poor credit. Uh-huh. But that's pretty liberal. Yes. And what aren't we counting, Dave? We're not counting. Okay, so three things, and actually three, and I'm going to say three and a half things. So the the half thing first is we don't have to count your energy bill. 
your Wii Energy's a heat bill gets reported to the credit bureaus, right. but but, we, but by the Fannie Mae rule book, we don't have to count, you know, your $250 yeah, February winter heat bill. All right, what's okay, the but thing? the other things, cell phone bill. Uh, according to the Internet, the source of all knowledge, the average cell phone bill is 73 bucks a month. I want that cell phone bill myself because I don't know. I don't know whose cell phone bill that is. Don't have to count that. Your cable and internet bill, 123 bucks a month. And then the last, the biggest one, uh, I think uh, parents joke that this is their other mortgage payment, child care costs. Dave, what does it cost for a four-year-old in the state of Wisconsin? What is annual daycare cost I, or monthly? I appreciate you asking that. According to the Child Care Aware's 2015 annual report in Wisconsin, it's darn near 12000 bucks a year. To That's send a four-year-old, four, oh, four year oh, excuse, excuse, to send an infant to daycare, it's uh, ten thousand bucks for a four-year-old. That's eight hundred bucks a month. That's like a car payment that we don't have to count on your really nice Mercedes Benz mm. called a kid. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that that we don't have to that we don't have to count. So I think there's the there's the difference between what we can approve you for. And for a mortgage you... and what might be comfortable. Right. And I think, you know, it's our job to just lay out all the facts and people can decide for themselves what makes them most comfortable. But it's important that, like, just because we can help you buy the every last stitch of house doesn't mean you have to. Hey, and if you want to be able to calculate your own mortgage payments on your own when you're shopping out there and looking at houses or just dreaming, remember, you can download Acunet's really cool mobile app. Yes. Right at the, is that at the top of our, the yeah. top right corner. And, and you can actually do it on our mobile version of our site, too, because our site is hip. Hey, you know what else is hip? We started using eSign this week for all of our application documents. Yes. And that is revolutionizing. It's making our already streamlined process, Steve, even more streamlined. True. Very cool. Have you done any e-signing for anything, Steve, yourself? Uh, yeah, I think I did on the probably Maybe fourth house I bought out. years okay. ago. There you go. It's been more common in real estate for a number of years yeah. now because their form is so standard. What's tricky in mortgage lending is we have so many different kinds of combinations of forms that have to be signed depending on the type of loan you're getting and then, in our case, the geography because we lend not only in Wisconsin but also Illinois and Minnesota and Florida that it's a little, a lot trickier implementation to get all those forms to be e-signable. But it's really slick. Uh, literally, you can e-sign on your mobile device. You can e-sign on your computer, on your iPad. And uh, even if you were to read all the documents, well, if you read all the documents, it might Which take you Which we an strongly hour. encourage. I strongly right. encourage you to do. But if you're just signing because... That's what most people do. I mean, you can do it in 10 minutes, yeah. and then you're on your way, as opposed to our old way of doing it, which was overnighting some. Well, papers. and in a busy and in a busy mortgage world, if we can cut down on the number of days, you know, getting that step in the process done, that just gets us to the closing table that much faster. All right. When we come back from this last break in the show, I forgot to give you the slowest selling single family markets Ooh. in the metro area. We'll have that when you come back, and then also a story from the front lines of mortgage lending. Right here on the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. I just love this artist. Modest Yahoo. They'll be at the uh, Briggs and Stratton Big Backyard Stage, 945 tonight. You're listening to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show here on 620 WTMJ. So what was the slowest selling market according to the uh, latest numbers? Well, I want to answer that question with a question. Do you think it was Richfield, uh, Burlington, or Delafield? Richfield. Eh, Richfield was the third slowest. Uh, there were 16 sales in, in uh, Richfield, and it took an average of 5.5 months to get that accepted offer. Burlington, second slowest. 6.1 months, and Delafield, for some reason, 25 sales, uh, on average, 204. Now, maybe there's a couple stinkers in there. Yeah, can I, I feel like, and I think we touched on this maybe a, a couple weeks or a couple months ago, but that there's starting to become these two different tranches of homes in markets. There's the stuff that's going real quick, and then there's the stuff that, languishes without much in the middle. Oh, yeah. And remember here, this could be an explanation. Remember, we, we've been noticing, and I didn't test this, but that there's sort of a bright line at 450000 Yeah. 
where if you're over 450,000, the inventory is uh, in favor of buyers. Okay. Right. There's a lot more inventory, and it's slowing more, selling more slowly. Hmm. So that explains why Delafield, because there are more expensive houses in okay. Delafield. Right. Uh, others in that camp, though, Shorewood, this surprised me, Shorewood is taking an average of three and a half months, Glendale 3.4, and Mequon 3.4. The average uh, number of days to get from listing your house to an accepted offer in the entire five-county area was shorter in June, just 79 days. Okay. That's 2.6 months, though. So that means somebody who sold their house on June 30th, when you take into account also the time it takes to go from accepted offer to closing, which is generally about 33 days, they listed their home in April, on April 12th. Okay. Okay, so that's still surprising. I know David keeps, every time we take a break, I can't believe that number. I I can't. I just, okay. All right, so here's my story uh, from the front lines of mortgage lending. So pay close attention. All right, when we do a loan, we have to make sure that people have that income. We were talking about debt-to-income ratio? Yes. Well, in 98% of the cases, we have to make sure that they have income. And yes. we have to verify that, typically by getting W-2s, pay stubs, et cetera. And what you have to understand is that you still need to have that job, the same job, not a different job, not no job, at the time of closing. Yeah. And so Acunet, like a lot of lenders, I think, does a best practice and sometimes because we're busy, we don't do this until the day before closing. But we had a situation this week where we did the verification of employment, which we typically do over the phone, and we found out that the borrower who set the close, like literally the next morning, had lost his job way back on June 3rd. Yeah. And we had already sent them. We have this form that we have everybody sign at closing. It's called the attestation form where we have our closing agents read it out loud, and then they have to initial, and it says, I still have the same job that I had when I applied that shows on page one of the application. person had that, and they didn't volunteer. Maybe they thought we were going to miss it. But, folks, you got to have the same job and the same income. You can't retire. You can't quit between the time you apply and the time you close. Yeah. Mm. You can't be laid off. You can't have your hours reduced. And you know, you got to have the same financial condition uh, at closing as you do up front. The other thing that we check uh, at closing is we refresh a person's credit report. It's and all. This is, again, a best practice. I think all the good lenders do this. Is We say, oh, you know, great, your debt-to-income ratio is 49%. Let's say yeah. with this woman who I said who just approved in Florida. I sent her an email and said, because we can't use your husband's income, and we can only use your salary, and your debt-to-income ratio is right at the maximum, yes. you cannot go and buy a bunch of furniture for your new home yes. in in Florida before closing. You must do nothing. Exactly. And so when we're at our best, we remind people of that uh, because we, we're going to run your credit again a couple of days before closing. doesn't affect your credit score. We're just seeing if you have more outstanding debt Correct. than at the time you And that would be really a shame to lose your house uh, in that situation. All right, so to recap, we had the jobs report that could have really spoiled things. Stock market's way up, yet long-term interest rates remain low. This opens up the window for a lot of people to refinance. And remember, if you have a $200,000 loan, it only takes a half percent drop in your rate, typically to make a refi worthwhile, because that's that's a a thousand bucks a year in interest. Uh, David pointed out we're helping a lot of people shorten their loan terms. Yeah. You know, if you got 25 uh, years left, I just did one for somebody where they had 28 years left. We could move it down to 26 uh, without making their payment go up. Yeah. So remember, we can do any number of years between 10 and 30, mm-hmm. uh, which a lot of people like. Rates are crazy low. Um also a good time to be out there and be a home buyer because inventory is a little up. That second wave of listings. Yeah, the summertime uh, listings. Yeah. Uh, what else you got? And don't forget a trillion is a really big number. It's a really big number. <laughs> yeah, and I guess in, in the conversations with, with buyers, you just you got to be the most attractive version of yourself to those sellers because – the good houses go quick. I mean, not to doubt the numbers you've been dishing you know, out. noting, dishing out, but good houses go quick, uh, and so you just got to make sure that you're the next best thing to a cash offer. That's what you would call your rock solid pre approval from your friends at Acuna Mortgage. All right, that's all we have time for today, Steve. Let's do it again next week and hope the rates are still crazy low.
Sounds like a plan. You've been listening to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. We're coming up on 11 o'clock. We'll check in with Michelle Richards in the WTMJ 24-hour newsroom next. The preceding was a paid program. Advice and opinions expressed during the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show are solely that of the hosts or guests of AccuNet Mortgage and AccuNet Realty Advisors and not WTMJ Radio or Scripps Media Incorporated. The-